Hey, what's going on guys? It's Adam from GHL Mastery. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about forms. How do you create a form? How do you set them up? But most importantly, there is a lot of tiny little nuance when it comes to things that you need to know and understand about creating forms and how forms get submitted and what different things will overwrite different settings on your forms. And we're gonna cover all of that inside this video. And as always guys, if you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe the video. We know that the vast majority of the people who find our content are not subscribers. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you get all of our content whenever we post a new video on how to do anything inside the GHL platform. So with that being said, guys, let's dive into creating forms. All right, guys, next up, we've got creating forms. So we've already created our custom values. Um, we've already created our custom fields. And so now we can move on to creating the forms and the surveys themselves. So what I'm gonna show you guys in this video is just a very basic structure of what is the difference between a form? What is the difference between a survey? Um, and then how you actually create them. I'm gonna create the form in this video. I'm gonna create the survey in a different video. And then I'm gonna create a conditional logic video to show you guys exactly how you can put forms on steroids effectively. So let's go and create a new form. To find this section, you're gonna go into your sites and you're gonna go into forms right here. And then you are going to click on add a form. So let's go and start from scratch or you can choose from a template. But for this use case, I'm gonna start from scratch and show you guys all of the different things that you can do with forms. So the first thing I tend to do is I tend to label a form. So I'm just gonna go GHL master class demo. As you can see, I type GHL mastery too much and uh, can't spell. There you go, GHL mastery master class demo. So your form by default is always gonna have first name, last name, phone number, and email in it when you create it from scratch. What I personally like to do is I like to get full name information and, and reduce the amount of fields. So I'm just gonna delete the first name and last name fields from there. And I'm gonna come over to the add form element button over here. And we're just gonna drag full name into this like so. And then you can click on the element itself. You can change the label. So you can change full name to what is your full name. And then you can change the placeholder to whatever you want. So let's just leave it at that. It's full name right now. Um, you can create a short label, which is actually gonna create another little sub label underneath this. So we can go, this is a short label. And this can be like a descriptor of what you need in this field if you want to do it that way. Query key, this is gonna be really, really important in later um, videos where we talk about ref URL structures and how to use um, query keys in those. Uh, but basically this is gonna be a reference field in a URL that can pre-populate this form field, um, which I'll get into at a later date. Um, you can adjust the width of this field. So let's just drop it to 80 for a second and you can see how it kind of drops and adjust the field width like so. And you can make this required. In this case, I'm gonna leave this at 100. Um, you can make it either required or you can make it hidden. And if you have it hidden, you can pre-populate the field with specific data if you want. You can even pre-populate the field with custom value data. You can pre-populate the field with you know, a specific dedicated email um, and things of that nature. So you can do lots of different things with hidden values in fields as well. In this case, I'm gonna make the full name required. Now, if you recall from the A2P videos, we talked about phone number. As soon as you add phone number to a form, and I'm just gonna guys show you guys an example of this. Um, I don't have the phone number on here right now, but as soon as I come in here and I grab the phone label, boom, it's automatically gonna add your opt-in, opt-out language on the form, which is required for A2P verification. So um, just be aware that anytime you add a phone number, it's gonna add this checkbox here and you're gonna need to edit the text content of the form in right here. Um, we've now also got email. Now, what else can we add to a form? Well, we can add a whole bunch of stuff. So what I'm gonna do just for the sake of this video is I'm gonna delete these and I'm gonna keep it nice and clean and we'll just slowly start adding things so you guys can see all of the different things that you can add here. Um, you've got your payments options, which are in forms now. So you can come here and sell a product and you can come and add the product, which we don't have set up yet. But if once you do have a product set up, you can select and add the products to here and you can use the form to sell your stuff, which is really, really awesome. The next thing that you can do is you can collect payments. And so with this collect payment option, this is kind of like a donation or a, you know, we're actually using this for one of our other companies um, to help fundraisers fundraise. And so 
you can come in here and you can change the field types. So how much are the defaults? Um, you can change the currency right here as well. And let's just say we're going to do, you can, you can donate $10, you can donate $20, and you can donate $30. And then you can include or exclude other amount. What this will actually do is it will allow them to put in their own amount that they want to plug in here. So great for donations um, and things of that nature. So you can again change the field names. Um, you can turn it to live mode or test mode so that you can test it uh, from here as well. And then you can you can add all of these different placeholder functions right here as well. So lots of different options with payment collection right there. Um, you've got the address. So if you have this turned on, you can actually do a search by address function right here. And that's being turned on at the agency level, which we covered in a previous video. Um, and you can have this as a required field. You could have it as a hidden field. Um, you can update these labels for all of these different elements here. So when this is right here, this is going to use Google's um, API to search for property addresses and auto populate all of the address information in here for you. If you don't want to do that, you can do manual city, state, and so on and so forth. So you can just kind of drag all of these in here. Um, organization, remember if you talked when we talked about custom fields and custom values, organization is company name and business name and all of those things. So it's a really, really weird label. I don't know why they do it this way, but they do. So it's something to be aware of that your company name, business name and organization are all exactly the same thing. Um, they just have different query keys. So an example here is when you fill this out, um, you fill out organization. If you're going into workflows and you're looking for organization, you won't find it because it's actually labeled as company name in workflows. Um, so that's kind of the variant there that you need to be aware of. Um, again, all of these are default fields in your forms. Um, so you can do a single line text field like so, and then you can give it a name and it's just going to be part of your form. You can set up advanced settings right here so that you have the custom field name and the query string for that one as well. And again, you can adjust the width required or hidden. You've got your multi-line right here as well. So you can do the same thing with your multi-line text and your text box text box list. Typically what I would do is I would follow the custom field guide in the previous videos here and I would cre pre-create these um, before putting them into the form and then use the custom fields section over here. But get used to you know what all of these things are so that you can use them all inside the form. And this is literally all just drag and drop. You can add an image to this. Um, you can choose a file and I'm just going to throw in our logo up here and I'm going to hit save. And then that will slow, that will display the logo here and you can adjust the image width and height and so on and so forth on your form. So you can do a lot of different cool things like that on here. Now, play with the standard fields you'll get a hang you'll get the hang of it pretty quick but what i also wanted to show you is your custom fields so inside the additional info folder we had created all of these example custom fields here so this is where you can actually find all of that additional information and throw it onto a form just like so so that's this is where you'll find all of your custom values you can search them by name you can search them by folder um, you can search them by object type. So you've got your contact and your opportunity fields as well. So if we wanted to add an opportunity field here for service type, we could do that. Um, and that's going to automatically pull this up, which is kind of cool because when you use opportunity fields in a form, you can actually pre-create the opportunity itself, which is awesome. So you can actually automatically put this in the pipeline and you can say this is a $5,000 opportunity value right here and the status is going to be open in which stage you want it to be in. So we can go ahead and hit save. So if this field is used in a form, it automatically creates the opportunity for you, which is really, really cool. Um, that's pretty much all you need to know about forms. Now I want to talk about what is the core difference between a form and a survey. You're going to understand that in the next video for sure, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a preamble. If we go and we save this form and we click preview, this is a one page layout for the form. So every question is going to be right after the next and it's just going to go on forever. If you have 30 questions, it's going to be a page with 30 questions just on one page. So that is what a form structure is going to look like. Whereas when you do a survey structure, it's going to be page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, and so on until you have your submit button. 
Now, one thing that is really, really important to know and understand about both forms and surveys is that you need to have either a phone number or an email if you want this to get associated to a specific contact record. So the standard merge fields within high level are phone number and email. So as long as you have one of the two on your form and it matches an existing contact record, it is going to update the contact record with the information that's on this form. If you don't have one, it's going to create a new contact. And if you don't have email or phone number, it's not going to associate it to any contact. So it's very important that you have at least an email or a phone number um, on this. Now, all of that aside, let's get into some of the additional form settings because this is where you can kind of do a lot of funky things with your forms. So you can have different form style layouts. So if we've got just vertical format right now, we can do a two column format like this and it'll automatically reformat the fields in this way right here. We can also do it as a single line, which I think looks hideous depending on the field types that you have. So let's go back to a regular form type layout. Input style of line or box. This is going to be your input fields so that this is in a box right now. And I shouldn't have clicked on that. There we go. This is in a box right now, or we can have a line. So it's just going to take it out of the box. You can adjust the width for the whole form and you can adjust the field spacing for the whole form as well and you can adjust the padding for the whole form as well so you can adjust the top padding bottom padding side padding and so on and so forth within your form from here do you want to show the label yes or no and so that is just showing the actual label of the field itself so what is your full name that's the label you hide it it just shows the placeholders on your form. So it just gives you a little bit more customization options within your form structure. Now you can also do form colors and adjustments here. So we can change the background color of the form to whatever we want. I don't like that color. So I'm just going to change it back. You can change the font colors. Um, this is going to be your input and your um, box colors. So right here, if you've got this to, let's say black, um, your font color, when they start typing it in, is going to be blue. Um, in this particular use case, but let's uh, let's change this back. Let's make this black and let's make this white again. I don't like to change things too much and I'm also not a designer, so don't judge me here. You can add a background image to your entire form, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. So let's go and use this background right here. And there you go. So there's the background for the whole form. And then we can add a header image, which if we didn't put a logo on here, Actually, that's a terrible idea to put black on black. Let's do white on black. Let's go grab our white version of our logo and there you go. So effectively what this allows you to do is this allows you to actually create almost its own page um, as a form. Um, so depending on if you're gonna be putting this form on a funnel or you're just gonna be using the form URL itself, um, you can basically create your own little funnel page inside forms that are gonna be unique to that form itself. Um, and then you've got all of your miscellaneous settings over here, which is basically turning off your agency branding. So this will show our agency branding down here on the forms if you want it. Um, there's advanced settings. You can do things like custom CSS and all of that sort of stuff. Um, but let's just show you anyways. So you've got your border width on your form. So let's just say you have a border and I'm using black on black. So that's not really gonna show you very much. Um, let's do border color is white. And let's change the border width to five. So this is adjusting the border width around the survey itself. But because my survey background is white, you can't really see it. Let's change it to red. There you go. So now you can see the border color right there. Um, if you wanted to add radius to this form, let's add 50 and make it nice and round. So again, you can change and adjust the styles there. You can change the border styles on your survey as well. And sorry, your form. Um, and you can adjust your shadow color here as well. If you wanted to add box shadow to your form itself. This is where you can adjust the input fields. There's literally guys, I'm not a designer, so I struggle with this stuff myself, but for those of you guys that are designers, you can mess around with this quite a bit um, and completely adjust the way that the form looks and feels um, by adjusting the fonts, adjusting the colors of absolutely every part of this form. But you can play around with that yourself because I'm gonna make it look like absolute garbage because I'm not a designer. Let's go to themes. You can adjust and change themes. So you can kind of, these are the template functions and structures that you can use. 
Um, and if you use these themes, it's just going to adjust everything for you and make it look pretty, which is what I choose to do because I am not a designer, like I said. Now, let's go into your options because this is really, really important for you to know and to understand. Okay. First option is on submit. What do you want to have happen when somebody submits this form? Um, do you want to display a message to them, thanking them for completing the form? Or do you want to send them to a URL? So this would be to go to a specific landing page or funnel or website. Or do you want to send them to an order confirmation page? So again, if you're using any of the payment functions inside the form, you might want to just send them to an order confirmation form at the end here. Now, what's really, really important to understand about these settings is that when you're using forms and you're mostly going to be using forms in funnels, um, when you're using a form in a funnel, you're going to have the option in the funnel to actually redirect to a funnel page instead of redirect to the URL or display the message. So whatever you end up doing in the funnel is going to overwrite what you do in the form itself. So just be aware of that. Um, these are your default submit options in the form, but whatever you choose to do in a funnel is going to overwrite all of these options. If you want to add a Facebook pixel ID, you can do so here so that when the form gets submitted, it tracks it appropriately as a lead and you can set up your pixel events that you want to have from the form being submitted and the form being filled out. And then you've got your form settings. Now, this is really, really important. And this, this catches a lot of people off guard is sticky contact. Um, I have one rule about sticky contact and I will never not adhere to this rule with sticky contact. As long as only the customer or the client or the lead is going to be filling out this form. Will I turn sticky contact on if at any point I'm going to fill out the form for that contact. So an example might be you might throw this form on a calendar, right? And you might fill out that form for the customer to book them. If you are ever going to be filling out a form for a customer, you want to turn sticky contact off. If the contacts are the only ones that are ever going to be touching or filling out a form like this, then you can turn sticky contact on. Now, here's the reason for this. Sticky contact uses the session ID of the device that the form gets filled out on. So your session ID on your computer is always going to be the same. And so if Jane Doe is your contact record and you fill this form out for Jane Doe, but you've previously filled this form out for John Smith, John Smith will then become Jane Doe. I know that sounds really, really confusing, but when you have sticky contact turned on, it is the session ID and the location that that form gets filled out from that determines who the contact record is. So if you're filling this out internally for 20 different clients, you're actually only going to end up having one client and it's just going to change that customer's name and email and information every single time you fill it out. If you are filling it out and have sticky contact turned on, if the customer is filling it out, you can turn on sticky contact all day long. And what that's going to do is just pre-populate all of their contact information onto the form when they fill it out. So that is your sticky contact GDR compliant font is just going to make sure that you are GDR compliant so that people can read it appropriately and access the information from it. Um, and then enabling the time zone. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you keep this on. Um, this is going to add the time zone of the user whenever they fill it out. And that's going to be based on their IP address. So if they're using a VPN, you might get hosed, but 90% of the time this works great where they fill out a form and you get their time zone in the system, which becomes really, really handy later on down the line. Hey guys, I hope you found that video useful and helpful for you getting your company set up in high level and getting your white label started with the high level ecosystem. Now, if you're just starting out your journey in the high level ecosystem, or maybe you're even an intermediate um, or consider yourself an expert that just wants to know a little bit more about the high level platform and how you can leverage it, I would encourage you to go and click the link in the description below this video and hop into our GHL Mastery program. What do we do inside of our GHL Mastery program? Well, we have five calls every single day of the week, Monday through Friday for two hours a day, where we actually help you get into your system, help you build, help you troubleshoot, and just overall help elevate your overall skill set on the high level platform. So if you're interested in getting hands on every single day support plus, a couple of bonus goodies, snapshots, AI systems, the like, then go ahead and click the link below to join our GHL Mastery VIP group. And I promise you, you will learn more in one month than you will in six months doing this on your own. We will see you in the next one. Take care.